or is it just a lot of it down to genetics in terms of getting closer to those times? Yeah, so I guess I mean, genetics play a huge part in our sport. Like you, you can have the best coach in the world, the best scientific backup, but like training will never put in what God has left out. You're dealt a hand and you've got to play that hand as best you can. So like some of us will train at a really high level, be super specific, and, and it might be a case of breaking three hours for the marathon. And you could work really hard to get there. And that's your Olympic Games. Other people will be two and a half hours. And then the very elite guys are, they're genetically they're freaks. You know, you might need 20 different uh, characteristics to be an elite athlete. You need all 20 if you're going to go to the Olympic Games. You know, whereas most of us are somewhere between 20 and zero. But you can't downplay how much genetics, how much that actually plays into it. It's, it's huge. So when you're coaching someone and, and someone gets on, they've got that unrealistic goal with you uh, because you've coached people to 220 or, or 220 odd and everything else. And you, you have a lot of great um, achievements as a coach. Someone like myself, Eric, is like, yeah, no, I want that 220. How how tough is that conversation? Has that happened before? You're like, it's genetics. It's not happening. Or what, what, what happens there? <laughs> Well, like it's it, it, genetics, like they're a limiting factor at some point, but like you don't know where that point is until you've done a, a lot of years of very consistent, very smart training. And the very first guy I started coaching, a guy called Bobby Murphy, sat beside me in Bank of Ireland when I was working there. Bobby ran 313 for the marathon back in 2011, I think it was. Um, Bobby's run 222 flat for the marathon since then. And that wow. was nine years later. So, that gives you an idea. Like he said to me after he ran the 313, I want to I want to be give this a proper go. So he came back. We went back to 1500s. So done 1500s on the track, 3Ks, 5Ks, and gradually moved back up to the marathon. So like if you were to take Bobby in in, in 2011 and say, right, well, what could you run? You might say breaking three hours would be a good goal. But over time, you just keep stacking year on top of year and you don't know where that limit actually is. So like with any athlete, I'd say, right, where are you now? Are we going, you know, and are you going to be better in six months and 12 months and then reassess the whole thing in 12 months time and then try and improve again? And if they're hungry for the work and they're and they're motivated and they're consistent with their training, like I said, you don't know where that's going to stop eventually. And and like for an awful lot of athletes that you, I mean, a load of athletes to work with, it's um, it's me trying to stop them getting in their own way a lot of the time. It, like ultimately, I'm just trying to unveil their 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 ability. Um, athletes have a great ethic for hard work they love pushing hard and a lot of the time my job is just to pull them back and allow them to stay consistent not get injured don't get sick and then be patient over time and see where you can get to it sounds like you have um and even look at some of your your, your training programs no stone and turn and stuff like that um you seem to be a big fan of periodization in terms of like when you build up to a marathon and, and you build towards your pb time Okay, now it's time to go back faster and back down to five Ks and stuff and build back mm. up again that way. And and uh, I suppose the race series and stuff like that, would that be fair to say? And, and yeah, yeah. And actually, this is the conversation I had with a, a girl this morning, and she was this is the almost the exact same question. It's like you're looking for different stimuluses throughout the year. Like some people will go on, they do half marathons and marathons all year round, but that training and stimulus is constantly the same the whole way through the year. Whereas if you're periodizing it, you're doing your marathon stuff for, for a sort of 10, 12 week block, then dial things right back, go back to 5k cross country, 10k for a while. Um, and and it's, it's that constant stack and different stimuluses on top of each other. Um, that's where you, you, you trigger, you're, you're tra trying to trick the body into to getting fitter and getting faster. And yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's important that you're doing different stuff at different times of the year. What's when the you name? see, oh, go ahead, Eric. sorry, when you see the likes of us, Egypt stack going, I'm gonna do four marathons in four weeks, and <laughs> and how does that? This is usually my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't listen to the podcast yeah. for the last Sell three <laughs> entries, and we'll have a chat then. <laughs> well, let's say we 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 have taken a lot, and and it's one thing we always say about the podcast: we front row seats to great minds in sport and and great ideas, and everyone has different tweak and a different mentality and philosophy about sport and training. Um, we have started to change our philosophy in, in the patience game. And that's been something that you seem to express quite a lot, that it is a patient game. You've described from 2011 to the 222 marathon. How patient is patient? 